Good afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Heather Myers. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. A big day in court for the husband of missing Chula Vista mom, Maya Miliete. This morning, a preliminary hearing just got underway, and it comes just over two years since Maya disappeared. We do have team coverage for you. And first, we want to start with our Carlo Chiquetta, who's live right outside the courthouse with what happened in court today. Carlo? Heather, Kirsten, this is a case that's drawn a lot of attention here in San Diego, but also a lot of interest from around the country as well. Maya Miliete, a 39-year-old attractive mother of three, a doting mother by all accounts, disappeared just over two years ago from her Chula Vista home. No one has seen or heard from her since. Her husband, Larry Miliete, is on trial for her murder. Court documents paint him as somebody who's jealous, scared of losing his wife, and possibly paranoid. Preliminary hearings started today. Our Kelly Hesedal was in the courtroom all day long. Kelly, there are 25 witnesses on the prosecution's list. What did we learn in court today? Well, Carlo, uh, the first person on the witness stand today was one of the last people uh, to talk to Maya Miliete before she disappeared. In fact, she says that Maya Miliete called the law office that she works for the day that she went missing. Uh, her name is Destiny Johnson, and she says uh, she paints this picture of Maya Miliete uh, being someone that was a good mother, uh, uh, a happy mother, somebody who really loved her children, and who was afraid of what her husband's reaction was going to be when he found out she was filing for divorce. She said that they had separated before, and it was not good. Um, she did say that um, she, she was concerned um, about the reaction that would happen if, if it was found out that she was filing. And Destiny Johnson testified she was concerned about Maya's safety. She says Maya was afraid of visiting the law office in person because she feared Larry would find out. She says Maya wasn't sure how she was going to be able to pay for the retainer fee because she was afraid Larry would find out. Now, even though Johnson says she told Maya the situation seemed urgent, and urgent that is, and she should speak with a divorce attorney the next day, she says Maya was adamant about celebrating her daughter's birthday at Big Bear that weekend. Uh, she was very excited about the trip and didn't want to spoil it. Uh, so she agreed to make an appointment uh, with a divorce attorney for the following week. Now, part of the intake process includes sending a confirmation email to clients about their appointment. Johnson grew emotional when she admitted she worries sending that email to Maya could have been what led to her murder. It's part of my job to speak to people in some of the most difficult times, and you never expect to hang up the phone and, and be in a situation where, you know, everything's changed for their family and I there's just certain things about that that will live with me forever I do feel some remorse for sending her an intake form um, I feel like that was maybe something that was discoverable and it has made me question my role. And for that, I, I'm just not going to forget it. And you really could hear a pin drop in the courtroom when she made that last statement. I could hear Maya's family crying in the courtroom. It was easily the most compelling moment of the day. Carlo? Kelly, you just mentioned how quiet it was uh, when that bit of testimony came out. But overall today, you were there all day, even before cameras were turned on. Overall, what was the crowd like in that courtroom and what was the mood? tell you that it was very crowded in the courtroom. You know, uh, there were several people there in support of Maya Miliete. In fact, there were so many people uh, there to support her that the bailiff actually had to seat some of them on the defense side of the courtroom, which is something that they tend to not like to do. Now, it was a very long day, and it is going to be, uh, you know, a long day, a long preliminary hearing. We're talking uh, possibly two to three weeks. Kelly S. Alpini, a vivid picture of that first day of this preliminary hearing in court. Thanks, Kelly. All right now, I'm joined by Gretchen Von Helm. She is a veteran defense attorney, many high profile cases in your career. Not only does she defend cases, you are a lecturer, you are an expert in this world. And this is a very interesting case.
Yes, it is. It certainly is. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us today. The first thing, a lot of people may not know the difference. This is a preliminary hearing. What is the burden here? What, who is this most important for? It's most important for the judge. So the prosecutor has to give probable cause, which is some evidence but not a whole lot of evidence to convince the judge to set it for trial. And so she needs to set probable cause that a crime was committed and that this person, Mr. Millette, committed the crime. With a case that's this high profile, an investigation two years long, what is the likelihood that it wouldn't make it past a preliminary hearing, that a judge would say there's not enough here to go to trial? Highly unlikely. Just the burden. Uh, a, a well, the burden is so low. Oh, okay. It's not like they need much evidence, so they don't present all their evidence, and they're going to have three weeks, or even you know, usually they are two hours long, for most cases, or maybe two days for the high-profile cases. That this is going to take two to three weeks. They'll have sufficient evidence to meet their burden. We learned today that Larry Miliete will not take the stand during this, and in fact, the defense is putting forward no witnesses for this preliminary hearing for people who are just observers, that might sound odd. Is this something that should raise anybody's ears? No, it's very, very common. The defense rarely, if ever, puts on evidence at a preliminary hearing, nor do they rare, well, they rarely, if ever, put on their client. Why would they not put up any kind of defense at the preliminary hearing? Because the burden is so low that the judge usually binds over people for trial. It's very uncommon that a judge would not bind someone over for trial. So there's really no reason for the defense to put their client on or to present evidence at this stage. One huge factor in this trial is that Maya Miliete has been missing. We've never found her body. Prosecutors allege that she was murdered by her husband, Larry, but there is no body. Is that a big challenge for the prosecution? Is it one that they can overcome? It is a big challenge, but it is one that they can overcome. So former judge, he's now deceased, but former Judge Revac, when he was a prosecutor, prosecuted the first non-body homicide in this in San Diego, and he won. So from that day forward, the prosecutor's office here began to uh, prosecute those cases before they used not to, because the defense always argues, well, she's, you know, gone on vacation, or she disappeared because she didn't like her husband, or she was afraid of her husband, so she moved back to the Philippines. There's all kinds of arguments that the defense can make about where she is, and it's really critical for the prosecutor to have the body to get evidence off of the body. In this case, they do not have the body. Uh, your defense attorney, if Correct. this was a case that was presented to you, would you be confident with what you had to work with of what we know? Yes, I would. Because of that burden, because of the fact that there is no body? Right. Because there's no body and because there's a lot of different explanations for where she might be, a defense attorney would be very um, able to defend this case. Not that the prosecutor won't, at the end of the day, obtain a, convi a conviction depending on what evidence they have, but it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So if the jury has one doubt as to whether or not she's dead or whether or not he committed the crime, they will acquit him. Gretchen Von Helms, thanks for joining us. We're going to have you again at 5 and at 6 as we learn more from what happened in court today in this preliminary hearing. Very enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and go get warm. We're really cold out here. <laughs> we are cold. We're up on a deck where it's <laughs> blustery right now. Uh, coming up at 4.30, we're going to have much more. Our David Gofferton's reporting. No one has followed this case like our David Gofferton. He's spoken often with Maya's side of the family, Mary Chris and Richard Droulet, as they've gone through this organizing search after search for Maya, hoping to find her. Her. We're going to learn much more, especially what it was like for Maya's family to see Larry in court today. That's coming up for us live at 430. Kirsten, Heather.